Good morning again. Sorry for the noise. I, I'm gonna try to, to talk very low because my anyway my voice is so strong. I speak so loud sometimes. So I'm gonna try to be talking low. I don't want to to bother your your ears. Okay. Uh, anyway, it's a a pleasure to be here again to be teaching this morning. And again, thanks to the congregation, thanks to the elder, thanks to the deacons, uh, thanks to the all members of this congregation for the invitation. This morning we're going to be talking about the resurrection of Jesus. And again, thanks for the for the scripture reading, Luke chapter 24, verse 34. Thanks to the brother Al for the scripture reading. Saying to disciples of Jesus Christ, we're giving the message to the 11 apostles. Saying, the Lord has really risen. That's going to be our, our teaching for this morning. The Lord has really risen. And let's see the introduction to this topic. Let's go to the introduction. And we start with one question. Is Christ risen? The enemies of God said not. They said, they respond, the question saying, nah, he didn't rise. The apostles and his disciples stole the body of the tomb, but he didn't rise. That's not true. And actually, many people actually now are saying he didn't rise. That's not true. He's not a risen Christ. Others are saying that are still waiting the Messiah. But we know and we believe that's a big lie. It's, it's a lie of Satan. It's a lie. But this question is the most important question ever asked. This is the most important that mankind can be doing or asking. To understand and to believe that Christ or Jesus really is risen, we have to also believe that he really died. And we got evidence, no evidence of the believers of Jesus. It's easier for us this morning to be saying that he is risen because we believe in him. But the enemies of Jesus were saying that he was risen. The soldiers, men under authority, the elders of Israel, the governor of Jerusalem, Pilate, he knew that he was risen. But he said, we're going to give you some money, the soldier, and change the report say that he is not risen. This question, we respond to this question saying, like the verse 24 in Luke 24 says, he has really risen. There's no doubt. There's no question in mind. He's really risen. If Jesus be not raised, there's problem or Faith is vain. We are practicing a vain faith. We are wasting our time. So the people of outside is right. It doesn't have sense to be Christian. It doesn't have sense to be trusting and believing. If Jesus be not raised like First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17 said that he really is risen. There's no hope. There's no hope. We're going to pass away. We're going to die today, tomorrow, some minutes later. 
a no sense. There's no hope. We are dust. We're, we were born from the dust and we are going back to the dust. That's over. That's it. That's not true. We got hope in Jesus Christ. He is risen and there is a great hope. That's not true. That our faith is main faith. It's a true faith. It's a evidence. We are believing in a risen Christ, in a risen Lord. Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and he is risen. So we, we got to the next, the next click. A convinced crowd, the follower of Jesus, or the disciples of Jesus at the beginning, they were doubting. And some days before to die, he repeat the same words that he was repeating during a, a, his life. He repeated the words, I'm going to die, but in the third day, I'm going to raise up again. But they forgot those words. At the beginning, the crowd was talking about that. But later, they were convinced that he was risen. Some of them, some women, went to the tomb. No, with the curiosity to see that the tomb was empty. They were thinking that the tomb was with the body of the Lord. And they took some perfumes, some uh, aromatic essence to perfume the body of Jesus. But the great surprise was, I said great surprise, because they were doubting. They were thinking to find the body. But where's the, the big surprise? It was empty. But now they are believing that he is risen. Others, other disciples found Jesus in the road. Going to the village, they were talking in the road, and Jesus appeared to them. And they had a long conversation on the road. I was, every time that I read this passage, I was asking to myself, what about the names of these two disciples? But that's not the point. That's not the important point over there. The important point over there is that Jesus is risen. Jesus is the main character over there. That Jesus is risen. And at the end of the conversation, this it was the Lord. He is risen. And that's what we read, we read in, in the verse 34. They went to see the disciple in the report. The Lord has really risen. Why? Okay. And then the Bible said in 1 Corinthians in the chapter 15 that more than 500 brethren, more than 500 Christians. And the Apostle Paul said, some of them are still alive. In other words, if somebody said, oh, no. some of them, they are still alive. We are believing in a risen Lord. And we got evidence. Not only, not only faith in our heart or in our mind. Our faith is not a blind faith. We got proof. We got evidence. And these brethren, they got the evidence. So at the end, they were persuaded. And Jesus showed the evidence. What was that? See my hands? See my side? It's like somebody asked me. 
Are you a painter? Yes, you can see a little pain. You examine in my hand, you can see a little pain in my hands. You are a mechanic in your hands. You're working in the office, you're gonna see evidence in your hands. Your hands very soft, soft hands. But we see evidence. He's saying, thing with Jesus, with the resurrection of Jesus, we got evidence. And he showed the evidence in the next verse. The Father, the Father, what is the Father's Son resurrection? In the Psalm chapter 2, verse 7, I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, is David, but David is not talking about himself. Dying about Jesus. He said to me, he is the father. Me is not David. Me is Jesus. He said to me, you are my son. My son, you are my son. It's not David, it's Jesus. You are my son. Today, I have begotten you. Today, today I have begotten you with the context of this song in Acts chapter 13. And Today, I have begotten you is equal to say, today, I have risen you. It's not talking of course, the promises also for David. At the same way that Joseph, the son of Jacob, was thinking in the resurrection. In the future resurrection, so he said, to the children of Israel, when I pass away, please pay my bonds. Don't leave my bonds in Egypt. Take it too. Because I was thinking the future resurrection. I want to resurrect Israel. Every time I pass by the cemetery, the Allen Rock, I think it's a Catholic, right? Catholic cemetery. If you want to be buried over there, you have to go to the Catholic temple and to pay to the priest to be buried over there. But I was thinking, I'm not Catholic. So it doesn't mean I'm not going to be buried over there. So that was of Joseph. I know a Christian. I know I know a I'm a believer of the only and true a believer of the Almighty God. I want to be buried in Israel. I want to resurrect in Israel. So it's the same thing. Everything we're talking about him was talking about Jesus. Today I have begot in you. That was the of the Lord God, of the Father, talking about God Christ. Today I have risen you. And we find the interpretation of this song in the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 4, and continue with the rest of the verse. But we don't have too much time to be reading all those verses. But all those are talking about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What he said. God, he didn't say it was David, the one that is going to be resurrected on the first day of the week. No. Let's read Acts chapter 13, verse 33 and verse 34. That God is this promise 
to our children in that he read uh, uh, as it is also written in the second song. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. That's the interpretation of this, uh, this phrase. Today I have begotten you. Some people are thinking that God is about the creation of Jesus. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is God, the Son. In the next, in the next box, we continue reading about this diverse. As for the fact that he raised him up from the dead, to decay. He has spoken in this way. I will give you the holy David. Of course, this promise was also for the descendants of David and for all children of Israel that they shall be raised up in the future. That's why Jesus said many times, yeah, the resurrection and the life. Believe in me. That's the blessing. Promise to David, but fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Now, that's what the Apostle Paul is saying. He was, the, the Father raised him up, raised his son up to crown. Also, the idea of Begotten you is the idea of anointed. I'm gonna, I shall anoint you. The idea is you were born to be a, a king. That's what the Lord said to Pilate. Aren't you the king of the Jews? That was the question of Pilate. And the Lord responds, I am a king. I was a king. But now, when he resurrects from the dead, is the time from king. Jesus now is crowned like a king. And the father raised the son up. Also high priest. Hebrew chapter 5. Verse 5. So Christ did not glorify himself so as high priest, but he who said to him, he is the father. He who said to him, I was saying that the, to David was telling this to his son, to Jesus. But he who said to him, our son, Again, we are going to find this phrase right here. You are my son. Today I have you. The father said this to the son. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. So he, the father, raised him up to crown him and also to make him high priest. Now we have a high priest offering offering for us. Interceding for us. Not like the high priest of the Old Testament. That once in a year they came to the Holy of Holies to talk to the Lord. We got a high priest now. A perfect high priest that is Ouch. risen. Ouch. Oh my goodness. Those other high priests in the Old Testament, they didn't raise up. They pass away. They pass away. And they are still waiting for the resurrection of the final day. But we got now a high priest. That is in the heaven. 
holy of holies was representing at that time in the Old Testament in heaven. Jesus is now in heaven interceding for us. Perfect high priest. That's what the Father is saying about the resurrection of his beloved son. In the next, in the next book. Jesus talking about resurrection. In John. John chapter 10, verse 17 and verse 18. For this reason, beginning in the verse 17, the loved me. Because why is it that the Father is loving his son? Because he was obedient to the point of death. Because I laid down my life. That's what Jesus is saying. My life so that I may take it again. Jesus is saying, he's talking about his own resurrection. I sure raise him again. That's the reason that my father loved me. But to, to raise up, he has to die before. He was obedient to the Father. He fulfilled the plan of the Heavenly Father. That's how we have hope. That's why now we are alive. For Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse No one has taken away. Got the power to kill me in other words. He could stop me. Peter said to him, think that, Don't think that, that you are saying that you are going to suffer, to be tortured over there and to pass away. Don't say that. What the Lord said to Peter, apart from me, Satan. Satan was putting in the mind of Peter those ideas. Every time that Satan is putting ideas to us, to us, let's pray to the Lord. If we are tempted, let's pray to the Lord. Let's start thinking in the Lord, in the promises of the Lord. And Satan is going to run away. So Jesus is saying, no, no one got the power to take away my life from me, but on my own initiative, on my own will. This is my own decision. I have to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up. This commandment, I, I got the power. But he wanted to fulfill the plan of his father. He was thinking in you. He was thinking in me. Jesus was thinking in everybody. In the next, in the next box. Let's go to the next box, please. Jesus also said, three days and three nights. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. People, some people say the story of Jonah is not true. But Jesus is repeating, he's making reference to the story of Jonah. The story of Jonah is true. The resurrection of Jesus is also true. And he's saying, I'm going to be, I shall be, 
in the tomb. But after that, I shall be raised up. I shall be alive again. The resurrection is so important because made him different. Different than the other men. Jesus is different than Joseph Smith. Jesus is different than Mohammed. Jesus is different than people is trusting on those men. But Jesus is different because he's risen. Jesus is even different than the prophet. Different than Moses, Elijah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and many more prophets. Is unique. He's different. He is the song. He said, the song of man, talking about his nature, but also the song two natures. It's different. We are believing in trusting in the only and one true God and Savior Jesus the Christ. And the next, in the next click, we see in his resurrection there is life. John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus is there talking to Martha. The sister of, 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 of Lazarus to Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Martha, don't worry. The resurrection and the life. There is life in his resurrections. But he didn't raise. There is no life. Everybody is dead. Again, the resurrection. He who believes this is me. You only need to believe in me. We live. He said, God is God of Abraham. I and but those men were almost seven thousand or a thousand years ago. And Jesus said, God is God of living people, not dead people. Even if he dies, we are gonna be alive. In the rest there is hope. We got hope. But we're going to die. Or tabernacle, or this physical tabernacle becoming all day after day. But the internal tabernacle, the Apostle Paul said, is renewing day after day. And if we pass away, we are going to be alive again in Jesus Christ. Oh. There is love in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There is love. That's what uh, the two men uh, say, said in Luke 24, verse 34. There is love saying, the Lord has, has really risen and has appeared to Simon. In the resurrection of Jesus there is love. Love for sinners. Love for us. In his resurrection, there is love for Simon. Simon, the one who denied the Lord three times. But he appeared to him. Peter, I'm here, I'm alive. You deny me, but you see, I'm alive. But I'm not here. I'm not here, right here, to rebuke you. 
I'm here to show you that I love you. Jesus loved everyone, sinners and not sinners. He's loving everyone. That's the purpose of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, to show his love. And in the next box, we are concluding our sermon of this morning. We conclude saying, believing love loves you. The cross, going to the cross, he demonstrates his love. He not only said that he loved us, he demonstrates his love going to the cross. His resurrection guarantee us his power to save us. And the question is, do you want to be saved today? Do you want to be saved today? You only need to believe in this risen Jesus. You only need to confess your sin. You only need to repent, to change your mind, to change your way, and start the right and new way. And you also need to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and continue faithful to the, for the rest of your life or until the Lord Jesus of the risen Lord came back for his kingdom. The lesson is yours. Thank you so much. God bless you.